our big Metro East Hub coordinator, and he is married to his wife, uh, Rina, and, and two sons, si Elijah and Ethan. And something na hindi ko sinare kanina during Huddle, galing ho siyang uh, Valenzuela pa. No? Galing pa ho siyang Valenzuela. And as uh, big East Metro East Hub Coordinator, he is in charge, of, in charge of not just our class cluster, but also yung mga cluster sa, sa Quezon City and Marikina. Kaya ho, ako po, totoo lang, konti pang sharing, okay lang, total marami pa naman tayong time. And I think I want Pao also to hear this. Kasi I was once in a stage na parang complaining. No? Parang ang daming kailangan gawin for ministry and I also have a lot of things to do for personal life and work. And then malaman ko si Pao, handling not just one satellite, but multiple satellites, lives in a place na malayo sa mga hinahandle niya. And on top of that, married siya at may dalawang anak. Pero, grabe yung heart niya to serve. So sabi ko, sino ako para mag-complain? <laughs> Alam mo yun, wala pa kaming anak ni Andy and I'm just in charge of one satellite by God's grace. But, Here I am, I, I am complaining. So bro, thank you. Alam ko, hindi ko pa na-share sa'yo yun. Pero salamat dahil sobrang na-encourage mo ako. So please allow me to introduce sa'yo. Welcome natin si Brother Paolo Perez. Hello. Ayan. Good evening. Thank you, Gina, for that. Um, again, it's a blessing to be here. Maraming salamat po for just allowing me to be here. Nakaka-blessed po kayong lahat. And... Salamat sa very encouraging na introduction, no? So, uh, we're still on a series called Back On Site, and tonight we're gonna talk about witnessing in our workplaces. Are you doing that? Yes, can I see a raise of hand? Are you witnessing in the workplace? Yes, one. Yung iba, two. Yeah. <laughs> But before I uh, start, ayan, yung kinikwento ka ni Gino kanina, this is my wife, Rina, for five years, and my two children, Elijah, And Ethan, and uh, we're, we have been blessed to be married for five years. And uh, we started then sa big, and you'll see the story later on. Yeah, so as we start, um, I'd like to start with this. Um, you live in a world ngayon na we're back on site, pagkatapos natin mag, mag work from home. And for the longest time, you haven't seen your boss. And ganito ba yung itsura mo pag medyo napapagalitan na tayo ulit? Pag when we are being hounded by a lot of things from the boss, or are you like this? Yes, that's right. I'm leaving work early to make up for coming in late. Or probably you're this. You're like this. My face 10 after 10 minutes after arriving to work. A lot of us are guilty of this. But my prayer is that we won't be people who are like this, who talk behind other people in the workplace and profess that we are Christians. And we sometimes, my prayer is that we're the energetic person. Tayo yung mga masasayahin. We, we praise God sa mga blessings na natanggap natin sa trabaho. Tayo yung nakaka-encourage sa other people. Or baka ito ka, medyo hindi nakatingin si boss, hayaan mo na. Uh, wala pa akong gagawin or probably we praise God that you are like this that you help you motivate other people but the best question for us tonight is that what do you want to be known for in the workplace? Anong pagkakakilala sa inyo ng mga katrabaho nyo? Or better yet or by all the people who knows you yung mga nakakakilala sa inyo not only in the workplace but sa community sa big, sa church? Or are you the same person here on church at pag-uwi sa bahay? Or are you a different person? Are we living a double life? And my challenge for all of us is that let's be a faithful witness. Can you all say that? Be a? Para pong ayaw nyo. <laughs> Parang ayaw nyo. Isa pa. One, two, three, go. Be a? Faithful witness. So before we start, let's uh, pray and offer this time in the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just want to glorify you and honor you, Panginoon. Thank you for a place that we can gather. Sing praises to you, O Lord. And just talk about your word. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa opportunity that merong big is wood. And you brought these people here 
this evening to hear your message, Panginoon. Lord, remove anything that hinders us, Panginoon. Any pride, any anger. Our hearts are disheartened after the elections, Panginoon. Please kindly remove that, Lord God, and keep that aside. And just open up our hearts and minds so that we can hear your word clearly and we may know how to be a faithful, faithful witness, not only in the workplace, but where you have placed us, Panginoon. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, you're very familiar with this verse, Acts 1.8. It says there, But you will receive power. Because what? The Holy Spirit is in us. All of us here are Christians. And when we receive Christ as the Lord and Savior of our lives, we now have the Holy Spirit. Hindi ka na ordinaryong tao. Dahil dyan sa power na yan, you can be what? Witnesses for Jesus. As we continue the verse, it says there, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be what? My witnesses. You will be my witnesses. Sabi ng Panginoon, telling people about me, saan daw po? Dito lang ba sa church? Sa workplace lang ba? Sa bahay lang ba? It says there, everywhere. Tayo po ay magsishare ng gospel witnesses, telling the people about Him, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, everywhere. Every time that, we, that I speak, I always remember that the power of Christ in me. Kung ako lang po, hindi ko kaya, at I hardly know any of you, but whenever I speak, I always know that it's never about Paolo, it's never about me, but it's always about Christ living in me. Siya po yung nagsasalita at hindi ako. So every Christian, I pray that you remember this. Whenever you go to work, whenever you go home, or kahit nasaan ka po man, remember who you are. You are what? You are a witness of Jesus Christ. You are a witness of Jesus Christ. We are a witness of Jesus Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and to share the gospel everywhere. Sabi po dyan, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Bakit nga ba tayo natatakot? Kaya nga nating tumindig para sa isang kandidato. Ba't di natin kayang tumindig para sa Panginoon? How many posts na pinus mo sa social media? How many posts ang pinus mo para kay Christ? Pag nag-profess kang kristyano ka, takot na takot ka, baka ma-unfriend, ma-unfriend ka. Gano karami yung in-unfriend mo? Yung blinak mo? Yung inus-nus mo for 30 days? And my prayer is that we take into heart that we are witnesses for Christ. We are witnesses for Christ. And if we take that into heart, tignan yung habilin ng Panginoon. And one of the audience was who? Peter. It says in 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10, it says, but you are not like that. Ito po ay yung mga Gentiles, yung mga, yung mga Jews kasi before they were living alone. And then eventually, nung sinabi ni Jesus Christ na, oh, you reach out also to the Gentiles, sinasabi niya kanila, Peter, that you are a chosen people. You are a royal priest. Pinili ka ng Panginoon. Not all people were chosen. Ikaw, pinili ka ng Panginoon. Hindi tulad nung nang iwan sa'yo. De, biro lang po. Yan, di ba? Pinili ka ng Panginoon. You are a royal priesthood. Noon po yung pag may priest, sa panahon po ng Old Testament before, and even the New Testament, parang they were treated specially. Mataas ang tingin, grabe yung tingin sa kanila. But, Ikaw, royal priest ka. Big time ka. You are a royal priest and don't take that lightly. Ano pa kasunod? A holy nation, God's very own possession. People of God's possession, a special treasure of God, a special treasure tayo. And sometimes we put ourselves down. Hindi ko kayang mag-share. Hanggang sa welcome ministry lang ako, pero pagdating sa, 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 sa office, di ko kaya. Di ko kaya, bro. Para daw po ano yung gawin natin? So you can show others the goodness of God. When you are bombarded by work, sa office, and people turn their backs against you, against you, ano yung challenge sa atin? You can show others the goodness of God. Bakit daw po? Because you are already out of the darkness. Tinanggal ka na ng Panginoon dyan, kinuha ka na ng Panginoon sa darkness. You have been removed to that, and you are now brought to His wonderful Light. And we should live differently. Once you had no identity as a people, 
He was talking to the Gentiles. But now, ano yung sabi? Now you are God's people. Same na po, pantay-pantay, Jews and Gentiles. Lahat tayong mga Kristiyano. Once you receive no mercy, pero ngayon meron ka na God's mercy. And he continues on. Sabi niya, dear friends, as I warn you, temporary residents and foreigners, hindi po tayo dito nakatira forever. Hindi ito yung kingdom kung saan tayo titira. And if you know that, yung hindi mo kayang gawin sa langit, ano po? Ano yung hindi natin kayang gawin sa langit as Christians? Guess what? Mag-share ng gospel. Kasi lahat dun kristyano na po eh. Di ba? Kung nandito tayo sa earth and not all are Christians, the one thing that we should do is to what? Share the gospel to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against our very souls. Live properly. Be careful how to live. He was reminding them. And we are reminding kami po, as your leaders, are reminding you again to live carefully. Even if you don't know what the future holds, even if you don't accept the results of the elections, be careful to live properly. Ano yung sabi dyan? Excellent behavior in a different translation. Angat sa lahat, among your unbelieving neighbors, then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, kahit daw yung mga katrabaho mo, yung mga kapitbahay mo, Sino nagtapon yan? Nagpatain na naman ng aso. Hindi nagtapon ng basura. If they do that against you, keep doing and living properly. Why? They will see your honorable behavior. And what? They will give honor to God when He judges the world. So again, my challenge for all of you is be a faithful witness. The Bible says that we should be witness while we work because we are called as witnesses of Jesus. So how do we do it? Number one, we have to be firmly grounded in Christ. We have to make a stand for Christ. Many times, ang bilis nating mag-give up. Sabi ni Bosh, sumat ka ng isa. Diba? We have to make a stand for Christ. We have to be firmly grounded in Christ. Alam natin kanino tayo nakatindig. Siya talaga yun. Siya yung hope natin. Siya yung pag-asa natin. In Colossians 2, 6 to 7 says, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus, Hindi daw po nag end when we accept Christ. Ano yung, what was, ano yung dapat natin continue? Follow Him. Ibig sabihin, we stay on course. Nakatingin tayo sa Panginoon, hindi sa ibang bagay. Let your roots grow down unto Him. Ano pong ibig sabihin nun? Malalim yung roots natin, deeply grounded yung love natin para sa Panginoon, and let your lives be built on Him. Many times we built our lives on a lot of things. Nothing wrong when you want to pursue good salary, high-paying jobs. Wala pong masama dyan. But my prayer is that you always have a heart check. Kamusta ba yung puso natin? Why do you want to take that promotion? Why do you want to take that additional job? Ang dami na ngang nakadagdag sa'yo. Why do you want that brand new car? Why do you want to travel? As incentive siya yung trabaho mo. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth. If we are deeply rooted in the Lord, sabi dyan, then your faith will grow strong in the truth. You were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. If you are trying to grow in your Christian faith and stay the course, the key to being rooted is to always come back to Jesus. You have to make Jesus a sure foundation. Lahat ng ginagawa natin, Kailangan nakatingin tayo. Will it glorify God? Will it honor God? Ito bang trabahong to makaka-honor to sa, sa Panginoon? Pag kinausap ko yung taxi driver, will it honor God? Pag tinulungan ko yung janitor sa trabaho namin, will it honor God? Pag nilinis ko yung table ko sa work desk ko, will it honor God? Pag pumasok ako on time, will it honor God? And bottom line is, we have to be deeply rooted and firmly founded in the Lord. Why? Because God saved you by His grace. You can't earn it. It's only by His grace when you believe. And you can take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. I pray that we set the bar high. When we say that we are Christians, hindi tayo magyayabang. People can see it kahit di ka pa nagsasalita. 
Pagpasok mo sa office, nice. I want him to be part of the team. Siya maglilid, I want her to be the leader ng team namin. Kahit na hindi siya leader, she's working more than she's, she's, she's supposed to do. Kasi kitang-kita sa iyo ang Panginoon. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Ay, meron pala bro, Pao. Meron palang nakaplano sa akin ng Panginoon. Yes, you are a masterpiece and it does not end there. May pinapagawa sa iyo ang Panginoon. You have to be a faithful witness. Sometimes the problem with all of us, when we have become Christians, tahimik na lang tayo, chill na lang tayo. Okay na, pupunta naman akong langit eh. But we have forgotten that we should be a faithful witness because the Lord has already planned what you will do. We should understand that we are not saved only for our personal benefit, but we are to serve Christ and to build others up. At age 22, I was already a manager of an equipment rental company of which many of those under me was really older than me. This is one of the teams that I was handling, all of them older than me. And many of them were questioning, Bakit yan? Sino ba yung Paolo na yan? 22 years old? Utos-utusan lang namin yan. But I was assigned to be the operations and warehouse manager of that company. At 2011, nung panahon po na yun, ang sweldo ko na around 50K as the manager. So but that time, malaki na po yun. And at the age of 23, I already had my own car. And I was renting already an apartment. And that's the second time in my life that I already have my own house and my own apartment. Pero di ko na po kikwento yung nauna. But I was living a double life. I was a churchgoer on Sunday. And Monday to Saturday, I'll work. Pagkatapos, magiinuman kami. We'll go to bars. Mambababae kami. I was living in a dark life. It even came to a point when my boss filed the case against me. Kasi daw nagnanakaw ako sa company. And those people under me kanina, all of them turned their backs against me. And they said na pag hindi sila nagsulat ng written statement, my boss will also file a case against them. I was lost. I, I don't know what to do at that time. At age 23, sabi ko, Lord, why? But when I was asking myself, why not? You are not living the life that you should be. And I lost everything. I, my parents told me, anak, magsettle ka na lang. Sabi ko, hindi pwede. Ilalaban ko to. Meron akong, meron akong mga evidences. But God told me, honor your parents. My mom at that time was in the US. My dad was in Saudi Arabia. I come from a broken family. And they were telling me, Sige na, makipag-settle ka na. Labag man sa puso ko, I settled. And I remember that night when I was living at the house ng mga tita ko, I was really crying to the Lord. Lord, pagod na ako. Pangalawang beses na to. What am I missing? Anong nawawala sa akin, Panginoon? And God reminded me, anak, mahal kita. But what are you doing with your life? After that night, I nakaluhod po ako and I was crying to the Lord. I felt that peace. And starting that day, I felt I was so secure in Christ because every one of us have to make sure that Jesus Christ is our foundation, our firm foundation. Madalas yun po yung nakakalimutan natin. And I remember that night, even na wala yung laman yung account ko, wala yung sasakyan ko, na wala yung Almost akin na na apartment, I felt peace because I was back as the prodigal son ng Panginoon. Next is that we have to align to the mission. Madalas nakakalimutan natin yun because of what we are receiving sa ating workplace. We're living in a good life already and we felt so comfortable about it. And we can't live the comfort zone that we have already. But one John 4.19 reminds us, we love each other because He first loved us. Bakit hirap na hirap kang mahalin yung kulay pink? Bakit hirap na hirap kang mahalin yung kulay red sa trabaho? Tulad, halos, it, dyan lang kayo, dit, merong harang. Lahat ng red dyan. 
Lahat ng pink dito. Di ba? We are reminded that 1 John 4.19 says, we have to love each other. We have to be reminded to be aligned sa mission natin. Tapos na yung elections, anong mangyayari ngayon? We have to go back to our mission. Our motivation should always be love. Love. Outside that love, yung love for other people, yung, outs- yung, uh, yung, another, yung entering into our relationship, we have to love each other. We have to go back to our homes. Maraming bahay, isang buong pamilya magkakagalit. Kasi iba-iba ng binoto. And I pray that you go back to your families and forgive, settle kung ano yung mga issues. God showed us in His unconditional love and we are commanded to love others as well. 1 John 3.16 says, We know what real love is. Why? Because Jesus gave up His life for us. And what was the command? So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. No way. No way, bibigay ko dyan? Di ba? Anong future namin? Di mag, magsusupport ako dyan ngayon sa, sa country? No way. I'll support the boss na hindi naman siya dapat yung na-promote ako dapat? No way. I'll support the team? Tutulong ako? I'll give out my effort? No way. Ang, ang hinihingi sa atin ng Panginoon is to give up also our lives. Bakit yung love di man lang natin kayang ibigay? Kasi wala tayong natatanggap in return. We are good when things are doing well. Pag may kapalit, oh, may extra pay, may bonus ka dito, todo effort. Kaya tingin tuloy na mga uh, hindi kristyano sa atin is that magaling lang tayo pag may extra bonus, pag may extra pay. And at that time, at my story, I lost everything. And my prayer is that, Lord, what do you want me to do? I remember every day in CCF Commonwealth, sabi ko pa yung challenge ko pa kay Lord, Lord, basta pag may malapit na church na sa amin, magsaserve na ako. Ayun, nasa tandang sora po ako, pinakamalapit yung Commonwealth. Nilapit na ni Lord sa akin yung church. And every day, dahil nasa business ako ng equipment rental, marunong ako sa live prod, sa audio, sa lights, sa video. And every day, nandun lang ako sa church. Kasi I felt secure there. Sabi ko, Pastor, pwede ba ako dito? Sige lang, gawin mo lang ng gawin yan. Until one day, we were able to join big commonwealth. And lo and behold, we, we experienced God's love dun sa, sa big Sabi ko, may singles ministry pala. Kala ko sa youth lang. Kasi umaten po ako ng Jason noon. And kung kilala niyo pa yun, uh, matagal na rin kami sa CCF. Ayan. But praise God, kasi after a few months, sabi nila, sabi nung leader, yung nagpipicture po dyan, si Warren, sabi niya, bro, can you be part of the course? Sabi ko, bakit ako? Bakit hindi? And sometimes one yes will make or change a our lives. And I invested my lives in, in helping the ministry, yung outreach, tumutulong. We went back to Pangasinan, tumutulong ako sa tita ko. He's a missionary and I was helping her. Sabi ko, pwede lang akong tumulong. I want to experience it. And after we became Christians, I lost all my friends. But after which, when I aligned to the mission, I found newfound friends. Never did I know that this group of friends who meets underground sa maliit na kwarto will become CCF Fairview. And that was amazing. Sabi ko, Lord, sabi ko, mag align lang ako sa mission nyo. From dati na nagsiserve lang sa live prod, I was given a, an opportunity to be part of as the ministry head ng CCF Fairview live prod. And sabi ko, Lord, I do not deserve all of this. But because we aligned ourselves to the mission, God will bless us sa ministries na pinagkatiwala niya sa atin. And He reminds us, Ephesians 4.32, Be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. And one thing yung hindi ko kayang malit go was to forgive my dad. He hurt us so much. Yung buhay ko sobrang sama dahil Siya yung sinisisi ko. I was into sexual immorality at high school and college. I was drinking, nagmamariwana, nag, nagsisigarilyo. 
as early as that because we had a broken family. But God reminded me Ephesians 4.32, forgiving one another. Hindi ka makaka-move forward, anak, sa ministry na pinagkakatiwala ko sa'yo. I cannot expand your borders, borders not unless you learn how to forgive. What's in our hearts right now? Hindi natin matanggap yung mga dapat nating patawarin. Whether sa office, nasaktan ka, nagsalita sila against you, God is reminding us, forgiving one another. If we want to be faithful witnesses, we have to learn to forgive and be kind to each other, even if it's hard. Alam ko, mahirap sa workplace. Napakahirap sa workplace. Tama po? But we have to learn to forgive. We have to be kind. We have to be tender hearted because if we really know Jesus we will love and serve him and we will align ourselves to his mission the choice is ours tayo po yung mamimili whether we will allow ourselves to be aligned to the mission or gigilid ka muna Lord, tsaka na, no muna Lord, uh, I want direction pero pag dinadala ka na ni Lord to align to a mission Lord, uh, tsaka muna po hindi muna po Hindi ko pa kayang i-let go yung buhay ko sa work. Hindi ko pa kayang i-let go na nag-give in ako pag sinasabing sumama kami sa mga gimmick ng boss. Di ako makatanggi. My challenge is that we choose to embrace God's mission for us. It's not enough that we know Jesus. We need to love and serve Him. And by doing so, we will align ourselves to His mission in our lives. Is next is we have to invest in others. Ano pong ibig sabihin nito? First Corinthians 10:31 says, "So whether you eat or drink or what whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God." When we seek to glorify God in all we do, we let the love of Jesus shine in our lives. Mahirap, mahirap magpatawad, mahirap magreach out, mahirap magsorry. sa boss mo. Mahirap mag-sorry sa katrabaho mo. But if we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, we will glorify God even in our workplace, even in our homes, even in our communities because we look at God. Not only do we need to do, ano yung sabi? And whatever you do and what? Say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you ask yourselves right now, Naging mabuti ba akong representative ng Panginoon? We vote for people to represent us in the government. But when the Lord asks you on Judgment Day, have you really been a good representative ng Panginoon? Ang galing natin pag nasa church tayo, but when we go back to the world, nandun yung challenge, nandun yung, nandun yung laban. Sa totoong mundo, dito kaya nating maging mabait. Diba? Kaya nyo akong pakinggan. Pero pagdating natin sa labas, parang we're deaf when we hear God's word. And I was really asking God, Lord, paano mo pa? Ano pa yung gusto mong ipagawa sa akin? And when I heard about Pray, Care, Share, one pastor told me about this. Sabi ko, Pastor, di ko kayo mag-share. Sabi niya, keep praying for them. Keep caring for them. And the first investment that I made was to put things right. We live, kami ni Rina both have a bad past. We entered into sexual immorality. But my prayer was, bago siya, I had a girlfriend and I was living in with that girl. And I was living a double life kasi a-attend ako ng anticipated mass ng Sabado. Pag-church kami ng CCF ng linggo. And my prayer was, Lord, Lord, allow me to have, if you will, a good partner, a Christian partner. And even di pa kami kinakasal, the church, CCF Commonwealth, told us to attend a couple's retreat. Doon namin mas nakilala yung isa isa. And as I was investing in Rina, I was investing in my family also. Kasi I was waiting for the blessing of my mom because before I ask her hand, And yung mama ko pa yung nagbigay ng engagement ring namin because she said, I honored her. And as I invested in Rina, I invested also in my family. Even if it hurts, most of the time, 
Naalala ko yung kuya ko nung nakikipag-live-in din siya sa girlfriend niya. Sabi niya sa akin, napakasanto mo. Nagpapakakristyano ka. Ikaw nga dati namumuhay ka ng ganyan. And that was really painful. But I went back. Pray, care, share. I was really praying, kneeling down every day, every day. And I was caring. Kahit na minsan naiinis siya, I would text him. I would send food. I would go to their place and share the gospel pati dun sa partner niya. And lo and behold, God paved the way for them to go back. My brother right now is already part of a D group. She's already been married, not with that girl, but with the Christian from CCF Maine. And my brothers, all of them are part of already of a D group. Yung isa serving in CCF Sandoval, yung isa dito po sa CCF main at saka sa Phyllis nagsiserve. And that was because we made that decision to invest in them. And with my mom, I settled. Kipag-ayos ako sa nanay ko, kahit marami akong inis sa kanila. Even yung tatay ko, may dalawa po akong kapatid. If you see, uh, both of them, yung isa nasa PMA, yung isa nasa SLU. But tinanggal natin lahat, yung unforgiveness in our hearts. Was also even able to share God's message sa mga ka- kapatid ni Rina, sa nanay ni Rina. They were, yung mga kapatid niya po ngayon nasa CCF Makati. Yung isa nasa CCF Bay Area. And Lord, sabi ko, thank you. Kasi this is my prayer to be used mightily. When I was kneeling down, yun yung prayer ko, God use me mightily. Even, come to a point, nakapunta na po ako dito. At one point, when we were doing Sipag, I said yes to God's calling at that time and we were reaching out to mga drug users sa Quezon City at that time. I even said yes to God when we started Big Fairview. At that time, walang alignment. Sabi ko, malalakas ako ng loob, sining nag-handle ng Big Pastor Iko. I looked for him in Facebook and he invited us sa office niya. And praise God, we were able to build a core na ngayon, eventually, they're able to lead and lead. And uh, I'm with uh, Migs. Siya po yung nag-handle ngayon ng Big Fairview. Uh, already with me, sa nasa D-group ko po ngayon. Even nung nag-pandemic, I was sharing the gospel to the extended sa family namin. Kasi hindi naman po nag end even pandemic. I went back to work. I tried working. And yung mga dating kasama ko sa inuman, when it went back to the pandemic, sabi nila, Paul, sabi nila, Paul, ikaw nga mag malakas ka kay Lord. <laughs> sabi ko, sige po, let's pray for safety, for guidance. And we went back slowly sa pagbalik ng mga events. Why? We are reminded in the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone, lahat po, whether believers or our believers, they will praise your heavenly Father. Why? We have to be intentional in our mission to be salt and light wherever we may be. Paglabas natin ng office, hindi na ba tayo faithful witness? No, we are still faithful witness. Pag uwi mo sa bahay, pagpunta mo sa church, pagsakay mo ng jeep, pagsakay mo ng grab, pagsakay mo ng angkas, wherever you may be, we have to be intentional in aligning to our mission to invest in the people around us. Not only here sa church, but be intentional sa office. Yung friend mo, nakatrabaho mo na hindi kilala si Lord, malay mo, eventually you'll be starting your own Bible study there only because nag-share ka ng baon mo. Diba? We have to be intentional. Next is that trust and persevere in God. How do we do that? Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and courageous. This was the time na pinapasa na ni Moses kay Joshua at that time bago sila pumasok ng promised land. Sabi niya, do not fear or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. Why are we afraid? Why are we feel fearful? A great promise, the Lord your God who goes with you, kasama ka ng Panginoon, hindi ka niya iiwan, hindi ka niya pababayaan. When the time comes na kailangan mong mag-share, siya ang magbibigay ng words. When the time comes, kailangan mong mag-share ng gospel, He will bring you to the right verses. 1 Corinthians 15:58 So my dear brothers and sisters be strong and immovable steadfast hindi tayo mabilis ma-shake ng mga nangyayari sa mundo our lives should be a living testimony to other people hindi tayo immovable hindi tayo yes affected tayo bumoto tayo but kung nagkaka-problema man 
Sa mundo, sa Pilipinas, we are strong in where? In the Lord. Sa Kanya tayo strong, sa Panginoon. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. Pagpasok mo last Tuesday, syempre affected ka, hindi nanalo or pangalawa yung gusto mong manalo. You're down. Ayaw mo halos magtrabaho. Gusto mo sumama sa komilik. But my prayer is that always work enthusiastically para kanino? Para sa boss mo? Para sa Pilipinas? Para sa kandidato mo? No, always work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is never is ever useless. Lahat ng ginagawa mo, may purpose, may mangyayari. Even though hindi, nag-share ka bro, hindi ko napatanggap eh. Hindi mo trabaho yun. Trabaho ng Holy Spirit yun. Trabaho ng Panginoon yun. Bro, nireject ako. It's okay. At least you tried. At least nakinig ka sa Holy Spirit, sharean mo yan. Maybe it's not the time para yung taong yun makatanggap. Or probably, nakinig lang siya and he was excited. But don't feel that your work is useless because you planted a seed. You planted a seed. I remember in my life, nabu- nabuhay kami, yung nanay ko, nasa, isa siya sa mga deacon. So early as my child, nabuhay na ako in a Christian living. But I remember how many times I accepted and surrendered my life to the Lord. Maraming beses. Maraming beses. But it was only one time when I really surrendered my life to the Lord. So don't lose hope. Mamaya, ikaw lang yung kailangan ng kaibigan mo to encourage them, to motivate them. Mamaya, ikaw lang yung kailangan ng magulang mo na hirap na hirap na rin pala sa pagpapalaki sa mga kapatid mo. Encourage them. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord. Pag sinabing work, hindi lang sa workplaces, wherever you are. Diba? Wherever you are, that is your ministry. Wherever you are, you are the minister. Kahit saan pa kayo dalhin. And we were almost about to give up. We had COVID last October. And five days, nasa akin po lahat ng symptoms. Nagpapaalam na ako kay Rina. Sabi ko, tawag ka na sa, sa umbulansya, dalhin na ako. On the fifth day, lahat nawala. And my father and I were brought to the facility sa Valenzuela. Ganun po kahigpit. And sobrang irritable yung father-in-law ko. Sabi ko, Lord, if you will, allow me to share the gospel to him. Inis na inis siya kasi ako nag, nagtumawag sa Valenzuela para dalhin kami sa facility. Sobrang irritable siya. Kasalanan mo to, kasalanan mo to. Dinala pa ako dito. Takot na takot siya. And there was one night, sabi ko sa kanya, pa, pwede ba tayong magpray? And I shared the gospel to him. And I remember for the next six nights, Every night, he will tell me, Paolo, can we pray? Can we pray? And I remember that night, sabi ko, Lord, thank you. I was crying. Lord, thank you. We can go home three days na lang. After two days, Rina, Elijah, and Ethan were also positive together with my mother-in-law. Galit na galit na ako kay Lord. Sabi ko, Lord, ano ba? Kabi mo, living testimony. I was faithfully witnessing to my father-in-law. I was sharing the food dito sa kasama namin sa kwarto. Pero bakit ganun, Lord? Bakit pati pamilya ko? Ako na lang. And ang galing lang ni Lord, it was amazing. We were bought, brought, nilipat ako ng facility. Sabi, kung gusto mong sumama, isang bed lang kayo. Sabi ko, sige, walang problema as long I'm, as I'm with my family. And I remember Rina, yung kasabay niya daw sa van, buntis. He was sharing the gospel. She was sharing the gospel. Binigay niya yung isang kumot ni Elijah, binigay niya dun para magamit niya hanggang mga anak. And the following day, ang aga niya nang gising, may buntis pa pala dun sa kabilang room. She was sharing the gospel. And I was crying to the Lord. Sabi ko, Lord, sorry. Kasi may purpose pala kung bakit mo dinala yung asawa ko dito to share the gospel. Hindi ko nakita yun, Lord. Thank you. Kasi nagka-COVID kami, nakakilala sila sa Panginoon. There was a couple, pinuntahan namin sa room, nag-share kami ng food. Nakita nila why, what we're doing with the other women. We shared the gospel also to them. And sabi ko, Lord, thank you. Kasi lalabas kami dito, we were home, fulfilled. Every day, may food kami from, from CCF, D-group namin. And buong Metro East, nagpapadala ng food araw-araw. 
And para kaming mga mayor doon, nagbibigay ng pagkain. But seriously, it was a joy in our hearts because they saw Christ in us. Di namin kailangan magsalita. They saw Christ in us. Bago kami umalis, parang galit pa yung mga taga-balin si Wela kasi mawawalan daw ng food. <laughs> But it showed that bago kami umalis, we prayed for a group of doctors and nurses. And sabi ko, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Because we have forgotten to trust and persevere in you. We went home to Pangasinan knowing that it's a rest. Kasi I was not feeling well pa po after 20 days. But Elijah was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Sabi ko, Lord, kala ko tapos na. Lord, kala ko tapos na. Bakit mo ganito? Last August, sinorender namin sa yung life namin. We will be serving full-time, not salaried. Nag-resign si Lina because this, ito yung gusto mong gawin namin. Bakit po ganito? Sabi mo, trust, persevere. Bakit po ganito? And we were reminded that our lives will be a testimony to many. We are now uh, in contact with three couples who also had a children or child na may autism spectrum disorder. And we are becoming an encouragement to them. Kahit nasaan tayo, kahit anong sitwasyon natin, whatever we're going through, we can be a faithful witness to God. Wag niyo pong kalimutan yan. Nothing we do for the Lord will ever be in vain. Even if we think nothing happened, but we should trust that God is working in and through us. And lastly, let's put our hope in Jesus. Napakahirap nito ngayon. Tama po, ang hirap eh. Ang hirap umasa sa Panginoon. But Romans 13, 2 says, it's for, this is for everyone. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. Siya ba yung pinili ng Panginoon? Yes. Kasi sila yung mananalo. They are instituted. They are chosen by God. We don't know why. Maraming kings at that time, si Manasi, si King Asa, maraming hindi mabuting king at that time, pero hinayaan ng Panginoon for a purpose. And we must not rebel against authority. It's a reminder for all of us. And because we will be punished. As a reminder also, Isaiah 40.31, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Kung naniniwala tayo sa Panginoon, mawawala yung disheartened sa atin. Daming singles and youth ngayon na parang ayaw na nilang tumuloy, galit sila sa Pilipinas, making sa Facebook kahit tapos na. If we truly trust in the Lord, we will find strength in Him. We can be a witness even sa comment section. We can be a witness even sa Facebook. They soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. If you are a faithful witness of God, kahit patuloy kang tumatakbo sa Panginoon, di ka napapakagod. Why? Because your strength is in the Lord. Ang hirap nung gagawin natin bilang faithful witnesses, we are going out of our comfort zone but we will not grow weary. We will walk and not faint because we trust in the Lord. And lastly, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust Him. As we look forward, as we become faithful witnesses, sa atin sana magsimula na alam natin na ang pag-asang tunay ang Panginoon, hindi ang kahit sinong kandidato. Sana sa Diyos tayo tumingin, hindi sa kandidato natin. Fill you with all joy and peace. Masaya tayo para sa Pilipinas. May peace tayo kasi alam natin, sovereign ng Panginoon. And so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hindi ka negative, positive ka moving forward because we know our hope will never be found in the efforts of man. Kita nyo po, nandiyan lahat ng kulay. But in Jesus Christ, only. Hindi po sa kanila. Our hope is in Christ Jesus only. So we can be a faithful witness. Faithful. Binago ko po. Puno tayo ng pananampalataya. Puno tayo ng faith. How? We are firmly grounded in Christ. We align to the mission. We invest in others. We trust and persevere in God. And we hope in Jesus. As I end, I'd like to request that you pray for me because I'm part of the Uh, Council of Servants of CCF Tandang Sora right now. They call me Bunso. Ako po yung pinakabata doon. Also, I'm, as Gina said, I'm handling 18 satellites. Soon to be 20. 
at may nadadagdag na church plant. And I'm also studying at uh, International Graduate School of Leadership, a Bible school currently. I'm on my f- first year. As I end, this is my prayer. When my life ends, I hope the Lord can say, Paolo, well done, good and faithful servant. And that is not only for me. That can be for you. I pray that you truly pray to be a faithful witness of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, maraming salamat po sa kabutihan mo sa buhay namin, sa buhay ko personally. Lord, I thank you that I said yes. Umoo ako to be a faithful witness sa'yo. Hindi ko yun nakita at first, Panginoon, katulad ng mga nakikinig sa'yo dito ngayon, that hindi nila nakikita why, why we need to be a faithful witness. Hindi namin nakikita yung future. Bakit pa namin to gagawin? But we must be reminded, Lord God, that we are witnesses of you. Di namin kaya, you will equip us. Di namin alam sasabihin namin, we will be empowered by the Holy Spirit. May we be reminded to stand firm and make that stand for you in the workplace, Panginoon. We pray, Lord God, that we align ourselves to your mission in our lives. Many times we get tired. Many times we burn out. But if we put our trust in you, we will have your strength daily. We will run, but we will not grow weary, Panginoon. And in times that we are struggling to put our hope in you, may we trust and persevere, dear Father, in your name, in your power, dear Father. And Lord, sa panahong ito, where there's so much negativity, where there's so much pain that we're feeling, Panginoon, may we put our hope in you, Panginoon, and may we be reminded to be faithful witnesses in our home, in our workplace, in our, in our community, Lord God. Wherever we may be, may we proclaim your name and your name alone. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, everyone. Amen. Uh, now let us all stand as we sing this song in response. be upon you. We love you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So we will have breakout for 40 minutes.